In this section, we're going to discuss the derivatives of logarithmic functions. Now, uh, you can talk about the derivative of any logarithm function, but the one we're going to focus on in this particular um, video is the derivative of the natural log function. Okay, in class, we're going we're to show that the derivative with respect to x of the natural logarithm of x is 1 over x. It's not too hard. We're going to use implicit differentiation to show that. <clears throat> and in general, by the chain rule, the derivative, if u is a differentiable function of x, then the derivative of the natural log of u is 1 over u times the derivative of what's inside. So that's a nice little rule. For example, suppose you wanted to differentiate um, the natural log of 9 minus x squared. The rule says when you differentiate that, it's 1 over 9 minus x squared times the derivative of what's inside, which gives you uh, negative 2x over 9 minus x squared. Let's do another one. Uh, what if g of t equals um, the natural log of the square root of t squared plus 1, which could also be written as natural log of t squared plus 1 to the 1 half power. The rule says you take 1 over the um, whatever you're taking the logarithm of, so 1 over t squared plus 1 to the 1 half. Now be careful here, you have to multiply times the derivative of what's inside. Okay, so the derivative of what's inside is 1 half times t squared plus 1 to the negative 1 half times the derivative of what's inside of that, 2t. And note, when you bring down the negative exponent and you add it to this, aren't you going to get t squared plus 1 to the 1 power on the bottom? That's why you get this. Now it turns out, on this particular problem, you could have also used your rules of logarithms on this. Isn't it true when you have a logarithm of something to a power, you could bring the power down in front before you differentiate? So then if you take the derivative now, the one-half factor is out of the derivative, and your derivative becomes a little bit easier. You just get one-half times one over t squared plus one times the derivative of what's inside. The twos cancel, and you have the same answer. So sometimes using your rules of logarithms might actually... Um, save you some work. Let's look at this one. For this particular problem, this is f of u equals the natural log of u plus 1 over u minus 1. It would probably be better if we put parentheses around the u plus 1 over u minus 1, but you, you won't always see the parentheses, and you have to realize it means the same thing. So the derivative of the natural log of something is 1 over that something. So when you take 1 over a fraction, don't you take the reciprocal of it? So you end up with u minus 1 over u plus 1. And then when you use the chain rule, when you multiply it by the derivative of what's inside, you have a quotient. So you're using the quotient rule here. Bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. So when you simplify the top, I believe the u's are going to cancel. And you end up with negative 2 times u minus 1 on the top but you also have a u minus 1 squared, so you can cancel a factor of u minus 1, so your final answer is negative 2 over u plus 1 times u minus 1. However, uh, again, looking at your rules of logarithms, isn't the logarithm of a quotient the difference of the logs? So if you do that first, when you differentiate, <clears throat> you just have to take the derivative of each piece. The derivative of the natural log of u plus 1 is 1 over u plus 1, times the derivative of what's inside, which is just 1. Same thing here, it's 1 over u minus 1 times the derivative of what's inside, which is 1. So when you get the least common denominator, which is the product of the two, you get the same answer. Uh, the u's cancel and you get negative 2 over u plus 1 times u minus 1. I think you'd agree this second method's a little easier. So look for that. Look for ways to simplify first. How about this one? <coughs> um, Again, I think the parentheses would be helpful. If it was the logarithm of the parentheses, uh, natural log of x, it might be clearer, but you don't always see that. So when you take the derivative of the log of something, it's 1 over that thing. So it starts off 1 over the natural log of x, but then you have to multiply it times the derivative of what's inside. The derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. So there's your answer. How about this one? Suppose y equals the natural log I'll try it again. Suppose y equals the tangent of the natural log of x. This is the tangent of something. So when you take the derivative, it, the derivative of tangent is secant squared of the natural log. Then when you take the derivative of what's inside, you get 1 over x. 
So there's your answer. Secant square root of natural log of x all over x. Don't get it confused with this one. This is actually the inverse tangent of the natural log of x. Remember what the derivative of the inverse tangent is? We, we covered that in section 3.5. Uh, the derivative of the inverse tangent of something is 1 over 1 plus that something squared. And then, of course, you have to take the derivative of what's inside. So you pick up a 1 over x there. And your final answer is 1 over x times the quantity uh, 1 plus natural log of x squared. Okay, I'm going to do uh, one more thing here. Um, now, in this particular problem, this is new. We, we've never looked at this before. Uh, we've never looked at uh, when you have a... Um, a function of x to a function of x power. We, we know how to, di we've looked at differentiating when you have a function of x to a constant power. That's the good old power rule, right? The derivative of that would be 4 times 3x plus 5 to the third times the derivative of what's inside, which is times 3. We also have looked at how to differentiate when you have a constant to a variable power. We have a rule there too. Remember how to how to do this? Uh, the derivative would be uh, fi, uh, natural log of five times five to the x squared plus three times the derivative of what's inside, which is times two x. But we've never looked at um, how to differentiate when you have a um, function of x to a, another function of x power. We haven't talked about that yet. And there's there's two methods. Here, so this is an example of that. There's two ways to go here. There's something called logarithmic differentiation, which I'll talk about first. And then I'll talk about another method um, where you can convert to base E. Uh, for logarithmic differentiation, what you do is you uh, first take the natural log of both sides. So you get this. And you can bring down the exponent of 2x plus 3. And once you do that, then all you do is you compute y prime using implicit differentiation. So the derivative of the left side, the derivative of natural log of y with respect to x, that's going to give you 1 over y times y prime. And the derivative of the right side with respect to x is going to be the product rule, isn't it? First times the derivative of the second plus the derivative of the first times the second. And then the, the next step is the last step here is to solve for y prime. You multiply both sides by y. But remember what y is. y is um, x to the 2x plus 3. So you could replace y with x to the 2x plus 3, and you could also get the common denominator. So there's your final answer. All right, well, there's another way to go here, too. Uh, another way to do it is just to convert this function to base e. Uh, Recall, as long as x is greater than 0, that um, x is equal to e to the ln of x, right? Um, so if you go back to the original function and replace x with e to the natural log of x and multiply the exponent, look what, look what we've done. We've converted it to base e, and we do have a formula for differentiating that. So the derivative becomes the derivative of e to a power is e to the power times the derivative of what's inside. Okay, you use the um, product rule here, like we did before. And the last step is to uh, rewrite, remember what e to the 2x plus 3 times the ln of x is. e to the 2x plus 3 ln of x is x to the 2x plus 3. So you could replace uh, this expression with x to the 2x plus 3 if you get the common denominator, you end up with, with that, which is the same answer we got before. Okay, so that's it. We'll see you tomorrow in class.